All right, in this video, we will see how we can use MATLAB to fit a linear curve to uh, a set of data we collect. Uh, that data could either be uh, simulated data or we could have experimental data uh, to which we are trying to fit a line. So we, uh, for the purposes of this video, we will look back at our uh, same circuit that we have been using. We have a voltage source, two resistors, one of the resistors uh, has a tolerance of 10%. Its value is one kilo ohm, but it can go uh, plus and minus 10% from that value. R1 is remaining as is, as one kilo, uh, kilo ohm, and we are measuring voltage across R2, and we are calling that voltage V out. We are running a DC sweep, so we are scanning uh, voltages at the input from one volt to five volt in steps of 0.1 volts. So I'm going to try to use MATLAB to set up this circuit and then we'll see if we can measure V out and also the current through the resistor R2 so that we can sketch the IV characteristics of resistor R2, look at the slope of that characteristic to find the value of R2. In order to do that, I'll do a linear regression, a simple linear regression to do that linear fit. Okay, so let's go uh, to my MATLAB window that I have over here. I've written up all the code. I just want to take a few minutes trying to uh, go over uh, what I've written up. So in, in order for me to run very simple commands, I can type them in the command window. So for example, if I just wanted to clear my workspace, workspace is uh, all the variables that I currently am using. So if I wanted to clear up my workspace, I could just say clear all. And so, it, 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 you know, if you have a very simple command like that, you can use command window to do it. But instead of uh, just a simple command, if you had a bunch of uh, code and you wanted to run all that code at once, then you would have to create a script. So to create a MATLAB script, you would go in new and then uh, select script. And then that will give you an empty editor where you could write up all your code. Uh, so for the purposes of this video, I've already done that work for you. So let's see what each of these commands is doing. So the first line, clear all, clears the workspace. CLC clears the command window. Close all, so if I have any figures that are open currently, uh, when I run this script, it's going to close all those figure windows and regenerate the figures. Um, my second line says R1 is 1E3, so that's 1 kilo ohm. I'm setting that one R1 value to 1 kilo ohm resistor. Um, in the third line, I have Vn starting from 1, going to 5 in steps of 0 0.1 volts. R2 is a, 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 the second resistor, which is 1 kilo ohm, 1E3, plus I'm also adding some randomness to this one kilo ohm resistor. So I've used RAND N, which stands for a random number generator based off of a Gaussian PDF or a normal PDF, and I'm generating 100 such values. So all random uh, RAND N does is it generates a value between negative one and one, and it's in this case going to generate 100 such values. And I'm multiplying each of those values with 100. So overall, this particular piece is going to give me a value between a negative 100 all the way to a positive 100 randomly based on a Gaussian distribution or a normal distribution. And I'm just essentially adding that to one kilo ohm resistor. So just to demonstrate what RAND N does, I'm just going to type in in my command window RAND N, and it's going to give me a random value between uh, negative one and one. And if I do it again, gives me another value, uh, and so on. So sometimes it's very less likely, uh, but it does happen when it goes above one volt, uh, uh, the value of one, because it's Gaussian. Generally, it's going to stay around zero, but very less chances that it is going to go far away from one. To, to learn more about RAND N, uh, I would recommend you just Google uh, RAND N MATLAB and take a look at that. So if I do pull up that page and bring it over 
here as you can see what Randland does, uh, how do you generate a matrix, uh, what are several variations of uh, using Rand N, and so on. So this is uh, available uh, in MathWorks documentation. Uh, there are several forms you can use Rand N for uh, in, in your code. So we close out of this. Okay, so that's how I'm uh, generating values of R2. And then I, I'm writing a for loop over here, essentially uh, a parameter i that goes from 1 to length of Vn. In our case, Vn goes from 1 to 5 volts in steps of 0.1. So I'm essentially going to have about 50 or 40, uh, 41 values. And for each iteration in this for loop, I'm going to randomly pick one value for R2, and I'm calling that value R22, so that I have a set over here of 100 randomly written up R2 uh, resistors in ohms, and I'm randomly picking up a sample from that set. Uh, and then I'm going to use my voltage divider equation, Vn times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 for that particularly randomly chosen R2. So that's going to be my V out. And I'm going to store that in the i row and the first column. So as I go through this loop, I'm going to have first row, first column, second row, second column, uh, uh, second row, first column, third row, first column, and so on. And I'm going to evaluate output voltage for each value of V in and each value of R2 randomly chosen from this uh, Gaussian distribution. Uh, similarly, I out, which is the current through resistor R2, I can find that out by dividing the voltage V out that I just computed by R2 that was randomly chosen. Uh, you don't need to know exactly what, what's going on in this part of the code, um, but if, if you're interested, try to play, play with it and uh, see if you can uh, simulate that circuit exactly the way we did in LD Spice. Now, coming, coming to plotting some figures. figures. So, so figure parentheses one just opens up the first figure window. I'm using the plot command to plot i out on the x axis, v out on the y axis, and the line that I'm choosing is black in color, which is k, uh, and the marker type that I'm selecting is small o, so you're gonna see circles for every data point in that plot. Then I use hold on because I'm interested in plotting other things on the same figure window. I'm also adding an X label here where I have I out in milliamps, uh, Y label as V out in words, and the title for my figure is IV characteristics of resistor R2. Uh, you can also put a grid on your figure, on your plot by saying grid space on. Now, I'm going to use a, a simple linear regression by using this I out divided by V out command. So you have all the data in X forward slash all the data in Y, and that's going to give you the slope of that linear fit in B1. When I, once I have that, I'm going to say V out 2, my linear fit is simply I out 2, all the data in X, multiplied by P1. So right now I'm ignoring the y-intercept because I'm right now assuming that all my data goes through the origin. So that's my V out 2. So that should give me uh, a linear fit to the data I essentially um, generated using MATLAB. Uh, now on this I out versus V out data, based on the voltage divider, I'm also going to plot uh, something that looks very linear in red. Uh, just because I've chosen my X label to be X label to be in milliamps, I'm just going to multiply my X values with uh, a thousand here as well as over here. That way, this milliamps will hold. Okay, okay, so the rest, rest of the code, code I'll go over in just, just a bit, but I'm going to run this and show you what that uh, looks like. So when you run this, by clicking on this tab under editor, there's a run button, play button. So you click that, 
you will have also have to save this file uh, or you could simply uh, click uh, f5 once you do that you're, you're going to have this figure one window with the x label y label and the title uh, written up as exactly the way you have chosen it to be and in black circles you have all the randomly generated data for v out versus i out and the red line shows us a linear fit that goes to the origin with a particular slope in this case because you are sketching the iv characteristics of resistor r2 and because we have chosen one kilo ohm as our resistor plus and minus 100 ohms um, we are going to expect the slope to be very close to one kilo ohm uh, let us see if that is the case. So, where can I find that information? Well, if, if you go back and look at your code, you have selected the slope to be B1. And if you look at the workspace over here, your B1 is 1.0277 kilo ohm. So, very, very close to 1 kilo ohm. But just because we have randomness in our data based on a Gaussian distribution, and we have chosen a pretty big um, deviation from 1 kilo ohm, because, because of that, that we are getting slightly off of one kilo ohm for our slope. slope. So, so that's how you would fit uh, a line using this forward slash to your data uh, in which you have x and y data. In this case, our x was i out, our y, y data was v out. So now you've got one way to uh, fit a line to a data randomly generated using experiments or using uh, code. Now, uh, there are other ways of doing a very similar operation. Uh, the next one we'll be looking at is polyfit. So I've commented this code out. Uh, I'm just going to uncomment this and then see what that uh, this piece of the code is doing. So I'm using the function polyfit, which allows me to fit a polynomial of, in this case, degree 1. So I could increase that to a second order polynomial, nth order polynomial, and so on. Right now, I'm just using a linear fit. X information is I out, Y information is V out. So I'm using the same uh, random data that I uh, generated over here. And then I'm essentially going to evaluate uh, the polynomial linear polynomial based on x and y data. So, so Vout3 is going to be the first element in polyfit variable p and then I'm also including the y-intercept over here which is going to be the second value in uh, the, 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 what the function returns. So polyfit returns capital P, capital P has two values, the first value being the slope, the second value being the y-intercept of that line. Um, now, now, if, if I, I wanted, wanted even this uh, function, function to be plotted on top of the data and the linear, linear fit with no y-intercept, I could do that. In this case, I'm sketching that i out versus v out 3, which is my new data here, in, in blue. And the format I'm using is a dash dot line. So I have original data in black with points that are marked as circles. Then I have a red line for my linear regression fit. And using polyfit, I have a blue line with dash dot uh, marker type. So when I run this now, you will see the same figure window, but now we are going to have uh, more lines. Oh, I did not scale high out. So let me close that and I fix this multiplying it by thousand because I have X as in milliamps. So run this again bring this over here. here. So, so now you can see we have got, got all the data over here, here very, very random. Our red, red line is using linear regression, regression no y-intercept, and, and then using polyfit, you are seeing that uh, blue line which has a dash dot uh, marker type. Uh, it's, it's very helpful because you have so many um, things going on in this part. It's very, very helpful to add a legend. So you can add a legend to your plot by simply typing in legend and in the order in which you have sketched the plots, you enter your legend entries exactly the same way. So you have got this um, random data first and then the second thing that we did was 
linear regression and then the third thing that we plotted was using polyfit function so run it again to see how that looks like so i've got you can move this around so i've got random data here in red i've got linear regression and then polyfit is the blue dashed line okay so that's how you would um perform a linear fit operation uh, on some random data uh, let me show you the results by using these two types of linear fits that we have done over here using the linear regression we got 973.67 ohms for this particular run and the slope that we have got using the polyfit is 961.7675 ohms so they're pretty very very close and uh, they're going to slightly change based on every run but that's how you could uh, do a linear fit to your data now let's say you were interested in uh, observing the values of resistor r2 so right here on line four i said r2 is one kilo ohm resistor plus some randomness uh, what if you wanted to observe the histogram or the probability density function of r2 well you could type in this histogram command let me uncomment these two lines i'm generating a new figure i could put this on figure two for example uh, and i'm using the hist hist command to generate the histogram for r2 and in that histogram i want 10 bins so i'm going to when i run this i'm going to see two windows appear my first window is going to be the same linear fit and then my second window is going to give me the histogram of R2. Again, of course, because this is randomly chosen data, this is gonna keep changing in every run. But what you can observe over here is the value of R2, the mean of R2 seems to be about one kilo ohm, but at some well, at, for some values of R2, you go away as far as 1300 ohms or as low as 700 ohms. And this shape is almost looking like a Gaussian or a normal curve. The y-axis over here denotes the number of elements that fall in each bin. We are going to have 10 bins because we have uh, we chose it that way. And so what, what does that mean? This means that there are about 24 values of R2 that are between 1000 and 1050 ohms and so on so this looks gaussian in nature so you know they're very helpful in analyzing any kind of data that you have um, let me also show you that if every every run um, your data looks slightly differently so in my second run your r2 looks something uh, different uh, and looks more and more gaussian so if you want to observe a very very good gaussian you would have to run this program for a, for a lot more values and have maybe a smaller bin size so that you can see some continuous data as opposed to something that looks like a staircase uh, that we have currently going on over here. Okay, so I hope uh, that was helpful uh, in how you use polyfit and how you use a forward slash um, or a linear regression to fit a line to uh, some data that you have.